Hello everyone. Uh, this is a video I'm um, recording now to give a feedback about AAT practice assessment one for bookkeeping controls module, uh, which many of you know by this time of the year. Um, that is the exam you're going to be sitting for it after your element of costing unit and the bookkeeping transaction unit depends on how the curriculum works for you. And this exam is for AQ 2016. Uh, uh, qualifications, which in fact is going to be changing on the following year to AQ um, 2022. Not following year, it's going to be from this September. This is going to be changed. Uh, therefore, whatever you're going to learn now, it's still going to be valid. And of course, this is going to help you to prepare for the, the next level or whatever subsequent modules in the current uh, level you are in. OK, so let's get into that mock assessment first okay so i'm just going to find a way i can share that screen with you so yeah normally if you're doing your mock assessment the assessments are normally done in a surpass waiver so i have that up in the screen now so you already see i have logged in using um, you know like a sample candidate of course i don't want to use the student candidate uh, information here uh, and then obviously we can't see a breakdown of this exam when I done it, but it will tell me whether I passed or failed. Hopefully, let's see, we pass this one. Okay, and this is the very challenging assessment, but also one and a half hour for the exam. And then you have, uh, if you see on the side here, you have 10 questions with various different amount of marks. So the first question you're looking at it now, it is about organizations use different payment methods. They want you to match the payment method to given situation we have now. All you have to do, you have to select an answer and then select with the payment method. And then obviously you can complete it. If you won't remove something, you just click on the line, you will remove it. Now the first question we have, making a payment via internet to purchase office stationery. So, so if you're buying something online, let me see whether I can use some mouse here. Uh, it's not easier if I use the pointer device instead of mm, trying to use my uh, the scroll pad here, which is kind of a nightmare. It's easier on the exam. You will not normally do the exam on a laptop. You'll be on a proper PC computer. So, making payment via internet to purchase office stationery. So, how would you do it? Would you pay by standing order, check, bank strap, debit card? chaps of cash because this is internet that straight away rules are chaps and the check mostly will be any other option we may have even the bank straff you can ignore it because you don't pay anything through um, you know by bank straff to be honest it's the most common answer it's going to be for this is the debit card or you may have a different mode of payment like a bank transfer, which already is there, but it's easier by the debit card. Making a non-automated low value payment in person. So therefore, if it's going to be a low value, non-automated, obvious it's going to be cash. Making a payment by post to a credit supplier, that scenario you may entirely use a check there. And then making a regular payments of a regular amount to a same recipient. So in this scenario, you know, if it's going to be something of a regular payment, you can make an automated process either by a standing order or direct debit. But if it's for a regular amount, use the standing order. And if it's for irregular amount and the payee will dictate how much the money they're going to be charging, it's going to be a direct debit. OK, so you can uh, look at the bank straff. There's nothing there matches that old chaps. Chaps is the clearinghouse automated process. Uh, so it's like payment service, and this one is going to be for a bigger amount for a once in a while transaction. The, the payment will be instantaneous. And also, this has to be involved. A third party like a lawyer will help you uh, process this transaction. And uh, show which two of the payment method below will not reduce the fund in the Pay us bank balance on the date of payment by click on the irrelevant payment method. So they're asking you which of two will not reduce the fund. Chaps, it will go straight away. Uh, standing order will be straight away. Direct debit will be on that straight away. And check and the credit card will take more than the certain amount. OK, so he cannot guarantee the check will be cleared within the same day. Only exception is unless it's been encashed in the same bank as the 
recipient. Okay, so that is possibly a very less chance of that's happening unless uh, this is happening in a town. There's only one bank and everybody banks with that same bank. Okay, so therefore, and next one is credit card. Credit card is obviously it will be the end of the next credit card credit card statement period. So it's not going to be reducing the bank balance on the uh, the date of payment. And then the next one, the, it is important to understand the effects of errors in a bookkeeping system. So when we're looking at it, show whether the errors below will cause an imbalance in the trial balance by placing the appropriate answers against each error. So for that one, you have to remember what type of errors they are. The first thing you're normally looking into, whether it's going to cause an imbalance or not cause an imbalance. So if you look at that here, certain transactions, as long as they have two condition met, then that means there will not be an imbalance. Why? Imagine the rules for double entry. You must have a debit, you must have a credit. You must have an amount on the credit side or the debit side will be equal to the amount you have on the, the opposite side, credit side or debit side. So if you have one transaction with a debit entry, another trans transaction with a credit entry, and if they're for both amount for that particular transaction, what will happen? Those both entries will equal each other out, so your trial balance will not cause, cause an imbalance. So therefore, you have to look at the transaction which may cause the imbalance, can be a result of an error where we have entries into the books which may be on the same side, only one single entry has been entered, there is a, a what do you call it, a transfer of entry when we're going to transfer the information, you got the information written down incorrectly, you completely omitted a particular part of the account when you're going to put it into your trial balance, like that way, there are many other reasons we can look into, but let's see the potential answers. The cash sales has been recorded in the sales and VAT control accounts only. So if you look at that now, if you look at the cash transaction, cash transaction normally will be recorded into your cash book, will be on your sales account and your VAT account. Okay, so these three transactions, sorry, uh, entries for this particular transactions are important. Why? Because when it's the cash sales, your cash book will have a debit entry for the money coming into the bank account. There is no mention about that cash book entry there. So that is definitely only one side entered and the other one is not. Because your sales and VAT control account will have credit entries, your sales, uh, sorry, the cash sales mean on your cash book will have a debit entry. Therefore, there is an entry missing which will cause an imbalance. Next one is purchase of a new computer has been recorded in the office expenses account. All other entries were correct. So basically, when we have said that an asset account like purchase of a computer will be recorded into the computer's account or the office equipment account. But instead of that, they have recorded that into the office expenses account. This is a typical example of an error of principle where the accounts are recorded into the right side of the T accounts, but into a completely different type of account. So therefore, this will not cause an imbalance. Why? The entry is still on the debit side, but it's on a wrong type of account. That's it. Your credit side's both fine, whichever it is there, but the entry into the debit side was entered in the incorrect account. Therefore, according to your accounting equation you have discussed earlier, rules of accounting, your debits and credits are matching, and therefore, a same amount. So there is not going to be an imbalance. Next one, a back payment to a credit supplier was debited to the bank account and credited to the purchase ledger control account. So normally a payment from your bank account will be money out of your bank account. If that is the money out of your bank account, your bank account will have a credit entry and your purchase ledger control account. In fact, it's a liability account which is going to be a collection of all the money owed to your suppliers. The suppliers account are normally a credit account. Why? They are your liabilities. We need to pay that money, but you owe them. Therefore, if you're paying your supplier, your entry for that one in your purchase ledger control account cannot be on the credit side. Why? It will increase that balance. It has to be on the debit side. So in this scenario, the error means we have entered your debits and credits other way around. We call this a reversal of entry. But when you make a reversal of entry, what actually happened? You still have a debit and a credit, although they're in the wrong side, but you still have the same amount. Your 
trial balance will still match. Your trial balance will have that information there. And what we're going to do, we cannot find errors unless you have to look into your accounts and identify this account. So therefore, this will not cause an imbalance. And the last one is a cash payment of 56 pounds for stationery has been recorded in the cash account as 65 and all other entries were correct. So if you look at the cash payment, normally your cash account will have a credit entry. Yeah, money going out and the stationery account will have a debit entry. So according to our transactions, the, the sites they were entered, they are fine because they have entered into cash account, but instead of 56 pounds, they have done 65 pounds. So on one side of your scale, of balance, you have 50, 65. On the other side of the scale, which is your credit entry, it is 56 pounds. This will definitely cause an, an imbalance. Why? One debit is higher or one credit is higher than the other side. This will definitely cause an imbalance. So I'm going to move that answer here, get to the bottom of it. So now let's move on to the next one. And then it says here, yeah, which one of the errors Below is an error of principle. We just discussed that earlier. Error of principle is when there is a transaction entered into an account, but into a wrong type of account. Okay, so that is an error of principle. That means an income you recorded into your liability, an income you put it into expense, or you have done a what do you call asset account into expense or expenses into asset. Doesn't matter as long it doesn't fit into that criteria of the type of accounts. The types you already know of. It's going to be assets, liabilities, income, expense, drawings, and capital. They are the only six categories you need to know of, and that's it. And they are, if it is crisscross across those categories, then that will become a principle. What if, if they're done with the same type of account? So, for example, in this scenario, the purchase of a new computer instead of the office expenses, I have entered into the vehicle expenses. If I done that way, it is still an expense. It is the same type of account because they are all expenses, but it's a completely different expense. So we have an office expense with a lower amount and the vehicle expenditure with a higher amount, which gives you an incorrect expression of a particular type of expense. We call that an error of commission. OK, so in this question, the answer is going to be that. Next, move on to the next one. The correction of errors in a bookkeeping uh, system recorded in a journal. Um, select one other transaction that is recorded in the journal. So if you look at that here, reimbursement of petty cash, irrecoverable debt written off, prompt payment discount received, interest received from the bank. So these three, this is going to be in the petty cash book. This is going to be on your, um, you know, discount received day book. Interest received from bank, bank is going to be in your cash book. The only other thing is there's no money involved in this. If this is an irrecoverable debt, we're going to write it off from our T accounts. So what we have to do beforehand, we need to record that in the journal, and then we transfer this information into the relevant T accounts later on, because this cannot go in any other book of prime entry. Let's see to the next one. To number two, bit thirsty. So here, uh, an example question about uh, payroll transactions. So this one can be explained a little bit more by using a spreadsheet quickly, okay? But before that one, let me just bring that up uh, quickly on the screen for you. So let me just bring an Excel file. Let me open an Excel file quickly and then let me design it so you'll be able to see that in a minute. Uh, before we do this question. Uh, where are we? OK, I think time is very limited, but I'll try to squeeze that in through quickly. Um, let me go back in here. Uh, Excel, yes, got the Excel. So here, when the business employs you, the business takes on additional payment obligations on top of your gross pay. So that is the thing students have to remember. So normally if you look at something called a wages expense, a wages expense is something involved multiple things in there. Okay, so the first part I'm going to quickly show here. 
this is going to be all inclusive of certain things there. But let's see this now. Let me just bring it for here. OK, so here I'm going to do uh, the card borders here. This is going to be your cross pay. OK. And then on top of that is going to be your employer contribution. Con contributions. Employee contribution are twofold. One of them is pension and NI. OK, and the gross space is going to be broken down into. Income tax. Employee NI. Then. Pension. Union. Student. Loan and other contributions like charities. So you may pay for charities if you're charitable enough. And I did <laughs> pay the odd penny when I was in my old employment. There's something called pennies for uh, heaven. It just rounds your wages to the whole amount. Sometimes if your wages finishing with 99 pence, you pay 99 pence. If it finishes at 1p, I pay 1p. If I have lucky enough to have a whole amount, I pay nothing. I don't know, that's how it works. But here, what you need to remember, the total expense for the business, it is just not only this. This, uh, let me just delete this. Uh, yeah, plus that one. So when you have the wages expense, the wages expense inclusive of all of that, plus this employer contributions. OK, so when you're going to enter this into your T accounts, what do you need to remember? The first part is we need to create the expense. So here the detail. Is going to be. Amount. A bit. Look at that now. The entries are always going to be wages expense. will be a debit entry. OK. And wages control account. It's going to be a credit entry. This is the first part you have to remember because you're creating the wages control account as a medium so you can basically looking into that all. All right, but I have forget one thing as well. So what is the most important thing I have to remember? Insert. Net pay. Net pay is going to be the amount they're paying from your bank. OK, so this gross pay inclusive of all of this. OK, so now we have looked into this now, but let's shift back to the question in hand. All right, but now I'm just going to see whether I can take a quick screenshot of it so we'll be able to bring it here so we can enter those particular transactions. OK, so let me see whether I can quick screenshot this snipping tool. Uh, and then I'm doing this here. So I don't have to go back and forward because I can do all of this question on my spreadsheet. So I'm going to paste this here. And then we can move it around here and there. All right, we'll get to there eventually. So the first transaction, according to this saying here, the wages expense is 70,000. 560 pounds. Other payroll information for the month shown below. Income tax machinations are as follows. So if you look at that, these are the extra expenses. The reason I created this, I know now how I'm going to split it, okay, which I've completely forgotten about, but let me insert a one here so we can work on this particular amount. So amount is wages expense is 70,000. 560 pounds and they also said here the income taxes uh, hold on 
I need to see a mount here. Come on, get my there a little bit. So this one, NI, National Insurance, is £7,125. The employer, NI, is 52222. Employees, NI, is 4657. There's nothing else they, they're talking about and then they're also talking about the employer uh, 5222 okay so we got that and we also have in addition to uh, in addition there are voluntary deduction for 42 employees who each pay 15 pounds a month for trade union fees okay this is the month worth of transactions so we're going to find the union fee so union fee is going to be equal to 42 multiplied by how much 15 pounds. So the total union fee they pay is 630. So how would I know what are the entries we're going to look at it? So here, if my total wages expenses that, okay, I need to find out what was my gross pay. So my gross pay is going to be equal to this minus that because for the business, this is the gross pay they advertise for the employees because this is what they're going to be paid. But then these will be taken away from them, so they will eventually get their net pay. The amount they show here, the wages expense, it is not the gross pay. Why? This is the total expense to the business, which is going to be your gross pay plus your national insurance contribution of 5,222. So if I'm looking at my gross pay, I can put that amount here, 70,000. 560 pounds. I just take this away from here. All right. So this is going to be this equal to this minus that. That will be the amount. All right. So now I have my gross pay. And then once you see the gross pay, if you take all of these three away, you will get your net pay. Your net pay is equal to this minus. Don't worry about the formulas I do because you may know or you may not know, but it doesn't matter. But this is what the amount you will pay your employees. So how the transactions working for that one? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say wages expense. No wages expense. Wages control going to be five thousand for sorry fifty two thousand nine hundred and twenty six pounds. It's going to be debit and then I have bank. Same amount 52926. Credit. So what I have done here, basically I'm going to be starting taking this amount away from the wages control account. Eventually, once you pay all of it, your wages control account will have zero balance there. Why? Wages control again, it is an account we created to get rid of the outstanding amount. Now let's move on to the next part. Next part says, what is your HMR revenue and uh, customs liability? So that's, I am again going to look at it. HM revenue and customs liability is going to be both of your income uh, tax and your national insurance contribution, national insurance contribution from both your, your national, sorry, employee and the employer. Okay, so this is the employer's NI. Yeah, we already got it. Uh, bear for a second, please. My apologies, guys. Okay, just declined it now quickly. Uh, let me close the screen. So no one will disturb me. Okay, that's fine. That's bad. So here, these two. And this one that will be equal to this uh, the amount we're going to be paying to Masi. So I'm going to say wages control again and for the debit value. So the value is going to be this plus this plus this. Okay. So these are the three of them. So then this is going to be HMRC liability. Liability. Got that right. 17004. Now I'm going to say here, this is debit and this is credit. And the last entry, it says here, what is your trade union liability? So let's go and have a look at it. Um, wages control. The amount, 630 pounds. And debit, trade union. 
630 pounds credit. But now I'm going to prove something again. So if I add these three equal to this, plus this, plus this, now you notice this is the exact same amount as your entry you made initially into your wages expense and the wages control. So if you notice that the credit entry was into the wages control here, these three debit entries eventually will be equal to that amount. Therefore, the wages control account will no longer will be there. OK, so now let's go back to our main screen again. Um, I'll, I'll see whether I can fill the answer, but if I can't, it's fine. I'll still pass. Uh, let me just find the video. Let me share the other video for you. Where we have the questions. Uh, so fast. Forward. So here I'm just going to quickly choose. What is that again? So I'm going to say wages control. Uh, wages expense doesn't matter whichever way you do. It is going to be still same. OK, so. So this is going to be no, no here. This is going to be wages control and bank, and this is going to be wages control and HM revenue and customs. This is again wages control. And this is going to be last one. Trade union. OK, so you just start to put the amount here. So let me find out how much is the amount again. Not there. All right, that's fine. We will get there when I'm going to fill that later on. Or if I have time, okay, we just already uh, 30 minutes nearly on the first two question alone, which I don't like. I like to have a little bit more quicker on this, but let's see this. Zoe Daniels, we're looking at a sales ledger account. They have given you these customer are uh, has now ceased trading owing the amount outstanding, which includes VAT. So in this scenario, the whole bill and their credit notes will be taken care of and then finally we'll find the amount they owe outright after all of this so this eventually we're going to think of it as it's in your sales ledger control account why because this is the amount the money they owe you they are normally in your ledger control account so if i'm going to look at the balance now 984 plus 1248 minus 317 minus 163 it is equal to 1,752 pounds. But I need to also know this is going to be a debit or credit into my SLCA because normally when there is a new invoice, you add them to your SLCA from your sales table. But when there is a write off like a discount or a credit note or a, a payment from your customers, you will enter that on the credit side. Same happened to your uh, irrecoverable debt because they're going to reduce the amount the customer owe you as long they're not going to pay you anymore, is it? So this is going to be a credit entry for £1,752 into SLCA. And then obviously you know have to find out what is the VAT element of it. So if you have this, you have to find out divided by 6, 1752 divided by 6, that should give me £292. That will be my VAT. That VAT obviously going to be reclaimed back because it's going on the debit side of it. And the last one, it's going to be an irrecoverable debt account. This is your real loss to you because you are losing this against your original sales value, not the total they owe you. From your sales you made, the customer has given you this loss. So this is a debit entry. Why it is sort of an expense to you and the irrecoverable account is an expense account. And then obviously a new business has uh, been started um, uh, and uh, a new set of accounts is to be opened. A partially completed trial uh, journal to show the opening entries is shown below. So what do you need to do here? All you need to do whether you need to say whether it's a debit or a credit, like your opening journal entry, you must have your debits and credits are matching, but this is only a partial there. You don't expect to have a final total here, so you should be fine. So first one, if you look at it, the cash at bank, it's going to be equal to that amount, but funny enough, it is equal to 8,000 pounds. So this is not partial. This is the, the whole of it, okay? So cash is going to be a debit entry, Capital is a credit entry. Computer equipment is a debit entry. A bank loan is a credit entry. Why? 
this is an asset, this is an asset. This is the capital special liability, loan from the bank also special liability. Luckily, your debits and credits are matching there. Not all, obviously, if you look at it, a partially completed journal, that means this will allow you to completely uh, complete that totally. OK, next one. Question number four. Now, this is the other account I'm always worried about because this is the thing when you're looking at it, students always look at it like, oh, all well, right, OK. I don't know whether it's going to be a debit or a credit. So first thing you need to know is how to record your opening balances. You, whether you need to owe to HMRC or owe from HMRC. That's the second question you ask. Then the third one you're going to be asking yourself, if I know how to post this into my uh, VAT control account from a particular day book, but there is a way of doing it. OK, let me just go back to my spreadsheet quickly. So here let's bring the spreadsheet up. This is an easy way to remember, so I'm going to create a new sheet here for my work. So here I'm going to see. I'm going to do like this way. Yeah, that, that should be fine. Um, um, OK, and then this is I'm going to do like this way. Uh, right border, no. Left border, OK, so here this is I'm going to be calling a VAT control account. This is my debit and this is my credit and the credit I'm going to be uh, doing a, a right intention here. And then, of course, I'm going to increase the size a little bit. So let me increase the column width to 12. OK, now the first thing you need to know the balances of your VAT control account. VAT control account is a special account. You may most of the time will be owing money to each other. Marcy. But sometimes you may also expect a rebate from them for an overpaid VAT bill from the previous month. So therefore, this account can be a liability most of the time. But sometimes it can be an asset account, so you have to make provisions for it. Remember whether it is asset or liability. I'm going to do the same thing again like I've done before. I'm just going to do a screenshot of this and then obviously I'm going to work from there. All right, so let me bring the snipping tool again. So let me snip that question and keep it next to our in our spreadsheet. So we'll be working from it. Yeah, bear for a second, please. Just start to tell this person keep ringing me. This bear with us. OK, my apologies, guys. Um, you probably can see the screen still. Um, all right, so I'm going to paste this here. The question we in. Uh, yeah, so now we're going to have a look into that as we go along. So now the first thing is whether this is an opening balance um, on the debit or the credit side. So here the VAT owing from HM revenue and customs. So therefore, remember, I'm going to say here VAT rebate on this side, VAT owed this side. OK, so this is your opening balance. OK, and then also remember your sales ledger control accounts. So remember when you've done your sales day book, so you have a total column, a net column, and a VAT column. So I should say VAT column, a net column, and this is from you. Sales day book. Sales day book is, is this, all right? So normally the total and the VAT and the net, we decide which accounts they're going to. So we decided this is SLCA, this is going to be VAT, and this is also going to be an account called sales. But also you decided if this is going to be a debit entry, these two will be credit entries. Why? Because this is an increase in asset. This is an increase in income and this is an increase in liability. So if you know your sales day book, that column is going to be on the credit side of your VAT. I'm going to say sales day book here. So once I know this alone, 
or we'll be able to populate all the other day books into their relevant columns as it is. OK, so then now first, if my sales day book is here, can your purchase day book can be on the same side or it has to be on the opposite side? That is the first question you're asking. Can they be on the same side? No, it has to be opposite. Why? Purchase is going to be a different nature of it because it's completely opposite transaction. So if you look at that here, I'll say PLCA. So, so let me say PDB PLCA. And then this is going to be that and the next one is going to be purchase. But here this is a liability. Therefore, it's a credit. This is the VAT we paid so we can claim back as a debit. Purchase is an expense, it is a debit. So you see how opposite these are working. So the VAT column itself, credit for your SLCA or the sales day book means purchase day book will be a debit entry. So if my sales day books here, my sales return day book and my discount allowed day book has to be on the same side. Why? This will be having the opposite effect to your sales day book. If my purchase day books here, purchase return day book and the purchase uh, sorry, discount received day book will be both on the opposite side of your purchase day book. And then also remember, if you make any cash purchases, it is similar to your purchases. So this is going to be here, cash book purchases. And this is going to be cash book sales. OK, and then also here you can have petty cash book as well. If you have petty cash book, uh, what do you call? Uh, sales and this is going to be petty cash book expenses okay so i don't say sales i say petty cash book income yeah and the other one's petty cash book expense and then also remember if your sales day book is here irrecoverable debt will be this side okay irrecoverable it's going to be opposite side and then one more then how are we going to record anything we receive and anything we pay okay so if you make a payment to hmrc you look into your bank account the bank account is going to be having what side uh, credit side because the money going out so here that paid this one is going to be opposite that rebate received okay so again if you look at that now these are opposite. If you have a rebate outstanding here, once the rebate is paid, you will be seeing that on this side. Why? This will cancel that balance. Similar, if you have any VAT owed, when we pay the VAT, this will be going on the opposite side. So this cancel, this one. So these two will be evening it out. So that is what you have to remember. Now let's populate this box straight away. That owing to HM Revenue and Customs, it is owing from, therefore it's going to be a rebate amount. So I'm going to say 2055. The total from the sales day book, this is going to be 5,820. And the sales return day book, they have said 493. And then we have a purchase day book for uh, 493. Why I got 90 there? 93. Uh, purchase uh, day book is going to be 4,215. And then we have the discount allowed day book is going to be 152. Uh, discount received day book is going to be. 208 and uh, cash book sales is going to be 804 and the VAT refund received from HMRC. This is going to be here 2055. OK, so basically this balance canceled this one off. But now we need to find out what is the total. Total is going to be uh, auto sum. Yeah, and then here also I'm going to do an auto sum to find out what is the amount. So I'm going to say auto sum from that here so here if you look at that no hold on that's wrong that is wrong so i'm going to auto sum here amount that to there so now if you look at it which side is higher for me my credit side is higher so i'm going to say this amount is equal to that amount so we balancing these two accounts off where is my balance carried down going to be? Because my credit side is bigger, bigger. So my balance carried down, balance carried down is going to be here. This is going to be equal to this minus and 
the sum of rest of those other entries and this is going to be your new balance so i'm going to say balance put down is equal to that one please do not worry about my excel spreadsheet is only there to clearly show you how this has been uh, entered you will do that in your piece of paper in your exam room if you've got a piece of paper you can write this down for you the first part you have to remember how to arrange these accounts accordingly okay then you total it and then of course you'll find the answer so let's go back to the question in place let's see the video again um then we will go there and put the answers accordingly so surpass we were so here this is a debit entry credit entry debit entry debit entry discount allowed is going to be uh, uh debit entry and this is going to be a credit entry so did i got them right anyway uh discount allowed 100 152 discount receives 208 that is a credit entry cash book sales is credit entry and this is going to be a credit entry oh we've done that now then we also found at the end of the vat control uh, account has a total debit amount of 7555 and the total credit amount is 11388 the following transactions have not been recorded into the VAT control account. VAT for uh, the total of 380 in the purchase day book, uh, you know, purchase returns day book, and VAT for 195 pounds for irrecoverable debt written off. What will be the balance bought down on the VAT control account after the transactions above have been recorded? So now what they have said to us, it is kind of a uh ambiguous the way you feel like okay my debit is already been for this amount this is my credit okay so now i can bring the spreadsheet up again so we can quickly snip this and we'll see how it works okay so here i can use the same question what we have before so let me go here get the spreadsheet out you know what i should not be using spreadsheet a lot but this will certainly help for looking at it, okay. So here, put that down here, and then we work from it. So what they are telling you, the similar type of account they have now. So they have said the debit amount is seven thousand fifty-five. The credit amount is eleven thousand three hundred and eighty-eight. Okay, this is the amount. We're not bothered bother about anything else. We're just simply looking at. A heading okay so top border and we're going to look at the left border that's it okay so now they have said what is the debits and credit and they're saying here we have got some purchase returns according to the list this is the only one missed so the purchase return will be going in here 380 pounds and this one it will cover that according to my list is on that side so 195 pounds the question they are asking us now what is the new balance okay what is the new balance board down so therefore we need to find the total again so here let's do the total we got the total here so it's going to be equal to some of these two definitely is that amount so here this is going to be that and the balance carried on is going to be equal to that minus that minus that so it's easier to do this and the balance board down is going to be the same amount so it will be on the credit side of it because we already know the credit side is much larger than the debit side so your balance board down eventually will be on the debit side okay also oh, the credit side so 4518 pounds and that should be going back into that question. Let me just bring the video again. Um, um, all right, OK, so here. 4518. 4518. on the credit side, OK? So now question number five now. We're almost at the half time, but I'm trying to uh, get a bit faster. Okay, guys, bear for a second.
Right now we have uh, these sales accounts, but also please have a look at it. Even though the sales ledger, there is one account with the credit balance. Can be many reasons for that one, you may say. But if you know, don't know, it could be the reason of an error or a possible overpayment from the customer's uh, point, or even they paid, we may have issued a credit note later. All right. So now if you look at that, these accounts will have all debit balances. And then they're asking you to find the sales ledger balance. OK, so now we're going to do a reconciliation quickly. So I'm going to look at all the debit balances. Debit balances are 8927 plus 14,066 plus 21,932 minus, which is the credit side amount, because you can add it because it's going to be something coming away from it. So the answer finally is going to be 44,563. All right. And then they have concluded the balance of your uh, sales ledger control account is 43,018 pounds. So what I'm going to do from that amount, I'm going to take away 43108 and I will have 1,455 amount as an error. So this one is the difference. We need to find out what it is for this question. I'm going to flag and move off because I will not spend too long with this because these questions are the one I hate the most because it's no numbers there. It's just word, but there is a way you can conquer those questions. I will explain to you a bit later. So let me just flag this question now. So flag. No. Did I go back by accident? Yeah. Uh, let's flag it. Let's flag it. See, see the flag comes up. I can come back to that bit later on. All right. So now we have another part of the question. This is a summary of transaction with credit suppliers during in July. So if it is a credit supplier, you know that it's a purchase ledger control account and the purchase ledger control account normally have a, a credit balance because the balance are owing to our suppliers. So I'm going to go here and say balance board down. This is the opening balance of 38,677 pounds. Then what we have, we have payment made, made by check. So on your cash book, that will be a credit entry, money going out of it. And on your purchase ledger, this will reduce the balance of my um, what do you call uh, the amount we owe to our customers? So this is going to be a debit entry there. But if you buy further goods, that's going to increase the balance. This is going to be from our purchases because you see here there is no other entry. So purchase day book, anything there now. So we can simply say this purchase. The purchase is, is going to be for the amount of 32,619 and the purchase returns will be the opposing of effect for that one because this is going to be reducing the amount we owe to our suppliers. OK, so we got this amounts there now and then what we need to do, we need to find a new balance carried down. Balance carried down. Can that be here? No. Why? Because the account is. Uh, heavier on the credit side, therefore balance carry down has to be in this one. OK, so this is going to be seven one two nine six minus three three five four nine it is going to be for the amount of three seven seven four seven okay let's move on to the next question we'll come back to that flag later on yeah just in case if you're wondering why oh lovely i love this question as well so this question is about updating your cash book okay what important information you need to know it's how we are going to reconcile your opening balance first and then you'll be able to find out any transactions which is already here and matching them out if you notice that here your opening balance is 1466 pound in credit that means we have money in our bank uh, uh, account or the cash book the amount should be a debit amount for 1466 unfortunately it is not showing so but what could be the reason this is all due to the timing differences. A timing difference is uh, an unprecedented check which we given to our suppliers or amount uh, we posted in our bank account, but it has not cleared yet. OK, so in this scenario, how to look for an abnormally. 
you know, like if you look at the anomaly, the word, word I used to look at it, an anomaly, it is something in this list which catches your eyes. For me, I know when I see that straight away, I can see the range of the checks are normally starting with 8, 2, 8, 5, 8, 4, but there is something with 6, 5. Why? This is a check we may have offered previous month and the supplier hasn't encashed it. So this is definitely a timing difference. So what if from that balance, if that checks go, will that match my opening balance? So let's check it. So I'm going to look at it. 1,466 minus the amount is 698 and I'm having 768 pounds. So this will match this one and that one. OK, so therefore I have reconciled the opening balance and then now move on to the next one. So do we have 5,415? Yes, it's here. I'm going one side first. Uh, do we have a Haiti chin? Yes, this one, it is all here. Then we have 707, it's there. 622, it's not there. 1627 uh, uh, is there. Then we have 2240, it is there. And do we have, have a Robson Limited for 525? It is not there, but we have one for Andy Lee. Because Lindy Lee. So this one is for 800, uh, 289 pounds. So now what they are asking you to do to update the cash book. So anything in this scenario like these two, are not necessary to be alarmed of because these are your timing differences. This will be eventually reconciled when you're going to do your bank reconciliation statement. For us, what is important though, if you look at these three transactions, these are not in my cash book and I have to update my cash book with that information. Okay, so there is two receipts and one payment. Okay, so if you look at the one, two, three, four, five payments, we look at that one, two, three, four, because this is an old check. So that's fine. That already reconciled. So the rest of them now we will update in our cash book. So the first thing is check the date. The date is going to be first is 2nd of May. So make sure you choose the right day. And then obviously this is going to be a bank interest and the money coming in was 29 pounds. Next one, it's going to be from Khan and Wade. So again, we're going to choose the month. It is going to be the 17th. Once you got that, and then you're going to say who they are, Khan and Wade. Yeah, you found the Khan and Wade. Uh, amount is for 854 quid, okay? And the last one is you paid out for PQ Partners. So we're going to look at that here. The check the dates again. A, it's a 25th, so you got that date. And the last one is. PQ partners for the amount of. 3,500 pounds, OK? So you got that information done now, but now what we have is a new balance. It's asking you here a check number. There is no check number for that, so you don't have to worry about that check number. The other side time in differences, so you can leave that blank. OK, there's no check numbers there to worry about. Because you cannot type in, you can simply say it's a standing order, but it's not necessary. Why? Because this is something it's not been for that reason. It is simply for check number. So how I'm going to do this account, I'm going to find out a balance carried here. I use this box. I use this box. I use this box. Doesn't matter as long as you choose something in there. So I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to choose the last day of the month, which is going to be 31st. So 31st of May. And the amount is going to be the difference between those to 9,510 minus 8382. That's going to be 1128. That is going to be our balance carried down. OK, so let's see whether. Yeah, one, one, two, eight. That's fine. You choose this box here or you choose the last box here, but it as long as it's above the total, it should be fine. You still be getting the marks for that. Now, next question is 1.7. This one is. Layla limited bank statement for July showed 
an opening balance of 3,518 pounds and a closing balance of 5,342 pounds. OK, so what is you have to remember when you're going to do a bank reconciliation statement, you only take your closing balance. OK, so the closing balance is 5342. OK, and then also what are you going to look for? You need to add any outstanding lodgements because this outstanding lodgement it's here 1882 because once it goes into your bank account once it cleared this will increase the balance and then the other one is whatever you pay out like here this will reduce the balance okay so here if you look at that here what they have said that now this is one of them is a credit note okay another one is a uh, what do you call a receipt or not a credit note maybe a refund so we have asked them they paid this amount but then we also given them a refund there's no credit note involved here it could be some other reasons i don't know maybe an overpayment and then you could have given them a refund so that could be the reason why okay so what now will be the answer you add your outstanding lodgement so 5342 plus 1882 minus 187 that should give me 7037 and that will be your answer next one for two marks they're asking you check the bank balance uh, so bank reconciliation statement on a uh, has been completed correctly by collecting uh, you know uh, checking your um, what do you call it? the carry down amount of your cash book and then each of the total columns on your cash book after the balance carried on has been recorded. So what we now are going to do, we're going to do our normal thing of checking my debits and credits quickly. So here 3921 plus 18882 plus 7 plus 3704 plus 2225 and plus 584. So my debit side is equal to 13,573. So let me record it in my spreadsheet somewhere. So let me go back to my spreadsheet, not to lose it completely. So I write it down here. Uh, 13,573, yeah? Bear for a second, please. All right, then we back to um, the questions again. Uh, the, de the debit side is 13,573. And then let's look at the credit side now. The credit side is going to be uh, 1446 plus 1108 plus 397 plus plus 906 that should give me 6536 so let me look at my uh, spreadsheet 6536 so what will be the total amount if you look at both of those amounts the highest amount is 13573 this will be the total amount because this is the amount we're going to use in our total columns isn't it so I'm going to put this amount in my uh, this amount here, thirteen thousand uh, five hundred and seventy-three, five seventy-three, and then if you take out the balance carry down figure, minus thirteen, three, my bank balance. Carry down figure now uh, is going to be 7037. So your answers are should be matching according to this cash book. This is the amount of this actual cash book. So your bank reconciliation is a success. So let's move on to the next part. The part is we're going to look at now is about how we're going to look for discrepancies and then how we're going to identify which other transaction 
which caused this is kind of, uh, you know, like discrepancies and like that. You got eight marks for this question, OK? But before we do anything else, let's reconcile the opening balance. Look at this opening balance now and the opening balance here. So according to this first question, you are preparing to produce a bank reconciliation statement for 31st of July, starting with the uh, the balance taken from your bank statement. Identify which two transaction may have caused the differences in the opening balance. So now again, I'm going to look for something which may have caused, but this is going to be two transactions. So you may have to look at one positive, one negative, two positives, two negatives. It doesn't matter, but it will be for the amount we are for discrepancy. OK, so let's look at this amount now. The first amount we have is 3000. 418 pounds. Take away the other uh, from your cash book. The difference is going to be 266 pounds. But I can't see anything here in your bank statement which matches that 266 pounds. So it's definitely going to be combination of two transactions. First thing is I always said to you is is to look for something representing a check number which doesn't match, like it sticks out like a sore thumb. Here, this is the check number I'm going to be looking for. So this amount, once it gone into that account, but that is going to be for 1,384. So the difference of 266 is overstated, but you may be finding some other transaction, but for slightly smaller amount, big or small, it doesn't matter, which may, once you add it up, will be equal to 266 pounds. So if you look at that here, there are several other transactions there, but this to this account, because it's Wilmot West, I will look at this. So I'm going to look at that here. 1384 minus 1118, it is going to be equal to 266 pounds. So these two transactions in question cost this opening balance to be skewed. So basically, if you add these to this and that and take away that balance, that should give me 31. Uh, so 3,152 means 3,152 pounds. These are the two transactions. So for the answers now, we're going to look for the check number one six. Yeah, one of them there. And next one is Wilmot Wares. OK, so this is what we have to identify. Next one, identify the details and the amount of one transaction. Uh, possibly it's going to be an outstanding lodgement, and we have to say whether it's going to be added or taken away, and then one unpresented check whether we need to do added or take away. Before even you going into that bank reconciliation statement, you know for a fact any outstanding lodgements will be added in your bank reconciliation statement and the unpresented check is always getting subtracted. OK, you don't even have to know the amount yet. But this is the law you normally do. The rules are you add your outstanding lodgement and take away any unpresented check. But before we do anything, let's go and check those transactions again. 4612, do we have it here? Yes, we found that one there. Uh, King Cranes for uh, for the amount of 388. I can't see it, but this one I can see. Portman PLC, Lee Ray 779. I found it. Court and Box 902. We got it there. And then we also have um, a 349 pounds for um, what is that again? Uh, 349. Uh, no, I don't see that here. Then we have uh, DL Stationers. For 551 pounds. Got that. And then we have 1392. We have that. MDC Limited 385. Mm, yeah, found that as well. And the last one is Ranson. So we found that as well. So now, according to this, what we have found out so far, um, mm, 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 anything missing? Anything I can think of, it's not matching up there. 902. Do we have a 902? Yes, the 902 is here. I just uh, didn't take it out. Okay, so that's fine. So now these transactions are your, what we call the one we update into your cash book. So this one we don't have to worry about in the question. Why? 
we already done something with it. We will update the cash book later on. But the question they're asking you is identify the details of one outstanding judgment and one unprecedented check. So these are the transactions in your cash book, which is not yet showing in your bank statement. So according to this, this LMR and the King Cranes are the two. Which one is outstanding judgment? This one. King Cranes is the amount we expect to be on our bank statement on paid inside, so it increases the balance. So we go here, we're going to look for that King Crane. For the amount of 388, 388. And then last one is going to be LMR project. LMR PLC, sorry, LMR PLC. And then that's for 349 pounds. That's all about it. This question, if you look at it, six marks for this. It is nothing whatsoever you need to worry about apart from looking for these transactions in the cash book, which are not yet updated into my bank statement. These are your timing differences. These will appear on the future bank statements if that goes through. If they hasn't done it, so unlucky. Now, question number eight. So we have a uh, suspense accounts question. This is where you normally have a bigger problem because students do normally have problems with these kind of accounts. So the first part I'm looking at it here, this is your suspense accounts with the balance of 180 pounds. And then we have to look at it on your sales day book. Okay, guys, if I run out of time, I will still take a screenshot of this question and we will work on it. I think I should be fine, but just a pre-warning. Sales day book. And this is you straight away now. This total amount will go into your SLCA. VAT will be on your VAT. Net is on your sales account. This is a debit, credit, and credit. But now there is a discrepancy. For me, I know by just looking at it, the VAT amount is fine. This one seems to be not fine, but this one is okay as well. If I know this correctly, by looking at the number alone, if you look at that here, 440 and 780 is going to be 1,220. Yeah. So if you add that together with 10,000, so 1,025, that should give you 2,245. So therefore, this amount is incorrect. The others are correct. Okay. So therefore, we don't have to update nothing here. Only thing is the net total has to be removed. And then obviously we had to enter the right entry. So what we're going to do now, this was initially entered into the credit side of my sales account. So to remove it, what we need to do, we need to go sales again, but we debit the wrong amount, 25, 2425. And then that's the next entry. Now we go back to sales again, but this time we're going to be entering it on the right amount at the right side, 2245. So this one to remove and this one to enter the correct entry. And then now there is an imbalance there. So what we need to do, we have to invoke our God given suspense account. That suspense account will eventually clear these two amounts of the imbalance. So if you look at that here, if my debit is greater than credit, my suspense for 180 pounds will go in this account. And therefore the debits and the credits are equal to each other for this particular journal entry. And that clears the error as well. So now the next one is. Another error has been recorded uh, as been found in the general ledger entries to record cash drawings of 425 pounds. Have been reversed, so what it should be done and what wasn't done so for that one, I'm just going to share, uh, you know, something different for you. I'm going to share my desktop is easier so we can have multiple uh, entries in there. OK, so here, what is the question posed there? So the question posed to us is. Um, if I find the. Oh, no, all right, OK, so so be it, it's fine. So this is the transaction we're going to look at it, all right? So the part I'm looking at it, the cash. Um, um, all right, here you go. Cash drawings of 425 has been reversed. What is the important word they use is cash. So if you look at the option here, most of the student, they see bank first, they use the bank. 
instead of this cash. So be careful when they say cash drawings. If they use a bank card or check, then that is a bank. So if person taken cash from the till, this is going to be your cash account. OK, so what we now have to do, we have to remember how this has been reversed. The, the entry should be cash credit. 425. Owings. Debit 425. This is what should be done, but now instead of that, this has happened. So how I'm going to correct it? If it's a reversal of entry, the first thing you need to do, we need to enter the right entry twice. That's all you need to remember. And also, if you look at it, the entry should be other way around. So what we're now going to do, this is what happened now. To remove it, what we will do, we're going to be crediting this account first for 425 and then debiting this account for 425. OK, this will remove incorrect entry. And this now repeated again. The correct entry, the correct entry is going to be credit cash and debit drawings for 425, 425 and 425. If you notice this, these two entries are identical. Simply the first entry is used to remove the incorrect entry of reversal of entries, and then we have done the right entry now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose drawings. And I'm going to choose. Cash, then again, I'm going to do. Drawings. And cash 425. 425. 425. 425. I'm probably saying that a lot of time. OK, uh, next one. Question number 1.9. 20 minutes to go, which is not bad. Then we have a look at this particular transaction. The the journal entries below have been prepared to correct an error. Uh, what we now have to do, we have to post this into our general ledgers. And this is 10 marks for this. OK, so very carefully, guys, just follow what I think is the best way of doing it. Only you need to remember this account is a debit entry and this account is a credit entry and the narrative will be the opposite. So if I see here, the office entry will have a debit entry of 1476. You go here, 1476 and the suspense account will have a credit entry for 1476. But now what is the narrative on these things? It is the opposite name, so I'm going to say here that and here I'm going to say suspense and then the second entry is here. I'm going to choose suspense, but for 1764 and this one again office furniture 1764. What could be the reason for that one? Why this entry was entered like this way. It is simply an error of single entry on one side. That means when I recorded that initially in my books, I have recorded as 1764 into my office furniture account, but the other side, it can be cash or it can be credit, was entered correctly for the value of 1476. So what we're now doing here, we are removing this balance from this account and we're putting that amount by using the suspense account our safety net. If you look at that now, the suspense account will have a balance of 1,764. Therefore, it balanced. We don't need to have a closing balance here, but the office account must have a carry down balance. Which side that is going to be? It is going to be here. So let me check how much is it. 10,450, 10,450 minus 1,764. It is going to be 8686. So 8686 will be the, the answer for that one. And that is 10 marks for this one. We've done it in two and a half minutes. Certain questions you can do so quickly, the time will breeze through. Okay, but you just have to think about your, you know, the the possibility or the rationality of how you answer that question. Okay, let's go back to question one point ten. Last question before we go back to one point five. So here I have. Suspense account 
and they've given you a, a debit total of 199601 um, and 200,827 pounds on credit column. So they are asking you where's the suspense account going to be. Suspense account will be on the side where your amount is smaller. OK, so it's going to be here. So 20,000. 827 minus 199601. It's for the value of 1,226 pounds. Now what we're going to do, we're going to think about how I'm going to be entering this amount into their relevant T accounts and then clearing this suspense accounts. So not suspense account, these office expense or bank overdraft and all of this. I can draw the T accounts, guys, but what I need to know is this is what type of balance and what type of balance is this and what type of balance is this? What type of balance is this? So here office expenses are for me initially it is going to be a debit balance and it's always going to be a debit balance. Why? This is an expense account. So the amount is going to be 1967 1967 which is not bad. All right. And then obviously you have two more entries into the debit side of it. So we were going to be adding that 241 pounds, 241 pounds. We have a new balance of 2449 pounds. Again, this is going to stay on the debit side. And the bankers overdraft, you know, bankers overdraft is on the credit side of my trial balance, 1076. And do we have any further entries into the credit side of the bank statement? Yes, this will add to that credit balance. So we, we're going to add these 241 and 241, and we have a new balance of 1,558 pounds. And this is also a credit amount. And then a furniture fittings account. Now this is where it gets bit. Tricky, you're talking about the suspense account, but it is not to worry. Why? Because this suspense account, if you look at that, this entry and that entry will eventually cancel each other out for this 1,226. So there is no suspense account to worry about. We only worry about our fittings account. So the amount is one, two, three, three, four. And are we going to add this or remove it? Because it's going to be on the debit side. We add it. Why? This will increase the balance on your debit side. So it's going to be 13,000. 903 and that is going to be a debit balance. Now this is another thing. Rent received account. What is the rent received for you? Is it an income or an expense? When people see rent, they just assume straight away it is going to be an expense. But this is a received account means it is an income account. The amount is going to be for that on the credit side and further entries increasing that on the credit side means uh, 602 plus 343 that is going to be 945 pounds and that is going to be a credit balance okay so now what we're going to do we're going to further look at the last few bit now uh, on the 31st october a partially prepared trial balance has been uh, debit balance totaling at 21000 whatever it is there and these are the credit balance the above below accounts have not been uh, um, you know what do you call entered into the trial balance what do you know HMRC VAT control owing to HMRC. So there be a liability account because it's a credit. Sales return, which side I'm going to go to? Again, look at it from the perspective of sales. Sales is an income account. Therefore, it's going to be a credit balance. And therefore, sales return is going to be opposite to that one. If that is going to be opposite to that one, this is going to be a debit entry. OK, so the debit entry for your sales return and drawings is opposite your capital and on your debt click is on your left hand side. It will be that much. OK, now that we're going to be doing, we're going to be checking our debits and credit to see they're both matching. OK, let's see the debit side first. We have 210,678 plus 49, sorry, 4671 plus 5615. It is going to be 220964. And the next one is the credit side is 208911 plus 12053. And that is going to be also 220. 964. 964. That's it. That will conclude our practice of this question. But we still have one more to do, guys. Which is that one? We have reached the one I hated most because it is down to 
uh, particular uh, word soup. It is only two marks for this question. Students do struggle because when they look at it, it, it asks them to look into it logically when there is no numbers there. There is an easy way of doing it. So for that one, let me invoke my spreadsheet first. OK, my spreadsheet. I'm going to record these two figures. OK, one of them is sales ledger. Which is for the amount of how much we got sales ledger is uh, four four five six three. So sales ledger is four four five six three. And SLCA on the other hand has a value of four three one oh eight. Which one is higher here? This one high and this one is low. OK, so I'm just going to say this here. I'm going to make it uh, red. And this one. Blue. OK, so just to give you an idea of it, OK, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply draw a T account. T account is going to be like this. Uh, top border. And this is going to be. Top border again. I'm just going to invoke part of it just to remind you this is a simple way of conquering this question. OK. Right now, a typical sales ledger will have debit balance and SLCA will have a debit balance as well. Why? Because this I owe uh, the amount the customer owe you. So I'm going to simplify this so I can use my uh, what do you call scenarios to Im implement those entries and see whether that's going to create some sort of a anomaly to it. So here, for example, I'm going to keep this as 100 pounds for these transactions. OK. Uh, so let's see here, because even the time runs out, my exam will be automatically uploaded and I will still get a competent because it's only two marks. I'm not going to be judged on this question alone, but this is the way I do and people find it very useful uh, when I'm going to be doing it this way. So let's have a look at this one. The one they're saying here, goods return were entered twice into the customer's account on the sales ledger. So normally when you return goods, we then enter it on the credit side of these transactions. Yeah, so this is what should have been entered. But now, according to our statement, it has been entered twice in the customer's accounts on the sales ledger. What happened now? We entered here twice, but only done it once. So what is the new balance here? New balance bought down is going to be 90 pounds and the new balance bought down here is going to be. Oh, sorry. This is going to be 80 pounds and this is going to be 90 pounds. So is that working for me? According to this, sales ledger is supposed to be high. The sales ledger control account is supposed to be low. But this cannot be the reason why this error are happening. So I can straight away eliminate this particular answer. You see, I simplify my transactions and then it gives me an idea of first one is. No, it is not. Now the second st uh, st um, uh, reason. The discount allowed were not entered into the sales ledger control account. So how you do the discounts you normally credit this account so that means it reduces the balance so according to them we should have entered here and here just say slca means it should have been exactly same as sales ledger what we were, what we done we forgot to write that down in this one we done only in this one so what is the new balance 90 and 100 am i looking at the same way of the balances reflecting with this particular transaction now again why it should be high and this should be low but it is not matching our findings. So here the answer number two, three, four, five, six. So this is also wrong. We simply say no. Nine. That's it. Now let's go to the third one. The goods were entered. A good soul were entered into customers accounts on the sales ledger. They entered it twice. So when they buy more goods of us, it will be going in the debit side. So I'm just putting 10 pounds, 10 pounds that increases the balance. But according to this, they're saying here the customer's account, they have entered it twice. So they've done it here. The new balance is 120 pounds now. And 110 pounds now. Is that matching my narrative? Yes, if you look at that here, 
this is high and this one is low. So that is one correct answer. So I'm going to say yes for that one. Let's look at the next two, uh, next three uh, scenarios. See, this doesn't take too long if you're done that way. If you're trying to think about it on, you know, like mentally, it sometimes might not work. But again, remember, guys, it's only two marks for this. You can completely ignore it and you still pass the exam comfortably. If you're stuck on this question, my advice to you, do not get stuck. Move on, move on. You have more to go there, okay? So if you've seen certain TV programs, when you're on the time limit, a person stuck on one question, they simply say, let's move on to the next one, unless you need to answer that question to move on. Next one, goods return were not entered in the sales ledger control account. So goods returns are here. We normally return and we put them in the credit side of those two accounts. But according to this, it is not entered in the sales ledger control. So what is the new balance again? 90 and 100. Is that matching my narrative? No. Why? This is supposed to be high. So the answer to that question is that could not be the reason why that um, the amounts are um, higher on the sales ledger. Fifth one. Irrecoverable debt written off were entered twice in the sales ledger control account. So if you look at that here, if I'm going to write a recoverable debt of a particular invoice, I'm saying I'm writing it off here on the opposite side. So if I've done it here once, it's fine. Yeah, because it reduces the balance the customer owe you. So according to this, they have entered this twice on the sales ledger control. So now if you notice the new balance is 90, and the new balance is 80. So what is that showing? Is that matching that narrative? Yes. So therefore, this one also a right solution, but is a right. We found two. Can I just uh, rest on my laurels? No, I need to check my last answer. See, just in case you made a mistake on the previous one, so we can eliminate that as well. So here, the check received was entered twice in the customer's account with the sales ledger. So when the customer pay you the check, means goes to the bank account. Bank account will have a debit entry and your sales ledger control account will have a credit entry. So here, this should be the entry for that. Okay, so this should be how it looks when I'm doing that particular transaction. But according to this, it was entered into the customer's ledger twice. So if I've done that here on the sales ledger, new balance is going to be 80 and this balance is going to be 90. Is that matching my narrative? No my narrative is not matching. Therefore, this is wrong. So the answer is going to be three and it's five. OK, so let's look at this question number two quickly. So that we have the amounts. Now I haven't entered the amounts. I'm going to be losing eight marks for this one. Yeah, plus one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and uh, yeah, six marks for that because I have six marks for this and six marks for this one. All right, so what now I'm going to be losing. I'm not going to be bothered about it because I just don't want to go back and search for that one. So guys, well done. Let's press submit assessment. Let's see what it shows. You have been assessed as competent. That means they have given their seal of approval saying you've done well. Thank you. Uh, but let's look at it this way, guys. This exam. It is. Um, tough on one sense, uh, but let me just get this off. Mm, teams. Right, so we back to um, the video again. So what do you need to remember with the bookkeeping control? If he's got 10 questions and he got 90 minutes, my suggestions, suggestions to students, you're pushing your times for your uh, exam questions in a basis, you think you have 10% of your total exam time to go back and check your answers. That is not to correct your answers or anything like that. No means like going back to any flagged questions, but it is to check your answers, whether you have filled everything in correctly, and then also to make any necessary amendments like something you found, oh, you're not sure you can change it. But please remember the all the time you can spare because the rest of the time you have to put that into your exam to concentrate on that. And also it's very important to remember also, uh, if you look at that, 90 minutes will fly very quickly. Some students have noticed you can get the exam done in 30 minutes, some of them done 45 minutes, but please remember 
that is their choice. They want to finish the exam quickly and go, whatever it is there. But you have that 90 minutes for your sole purpose only. There is no price for finishing early. It is all about you completing it successfully and then getting the, the maximum available points for you. OK, and also remember it is a challenge, challenging uh, unit, but it is very easily, um, you know, can be, you know, put it this way. Uh, you can get a really good scores with that one, but as long you go in well prepared, well prepared means it's not learning everything. It's about how you approach the exam. Get your demeanor right. Make sure you relax before you start the exams say yourself something to get yourself into the mood of the exam once the exam question starts write the vat control account write the t accounts you know like the debt clicks in your piece of paper they give you a spare piece of paper so it gives you a visual tool you can compare your answers to you may do that for many other things as well but it is you will know what you do best so it is entirely down to yourselves to get yourself mentally and uh, physically preparing for that bit. And then of course, manage your time properly. And you know, you may get stuck on a question, move on to the next one, and then get the easy marks from there and always come back to the question you're stuck on. So there's not much to talk about that one. You've probably done several exams anyway, but this exam is the hardest and uh, it also can be the one, you know, uh, what do you call it? testing you to the wits of your, uh, you know, the accounting knowledge. But end of the day, it is there for a reason because you whatever you learn now will be reflected on your level three if you choose to progress uh, further into accounting fields. And then this is something uh, like it's going to set your standard up. OK, and then there's nothing else to it, guys. And I wish you all the best and hopefully uh, you get this exams. Um, what do you call uh, completed successfully? And I wish you all the best and a bit my adieu and I'll see you with my next video. Uh, whenever it is going to be ready. All right, all the best. Take care. Bye bye.